Okay, so today I'm going to be drawing this lovely excavator. You can see from the reference picture. It's uh, quite an interesting perspective, actually, and and the colours are great, that pop of bright yellow. Um, no, it's a bit of a weird thing to sketch, but um, I will admit in the past I've drawn excavators, um, so I am familiar with them, um, which is one of the reasons why I've decided just to go straight in here with... Uh, the fountain pen and not to do any kind of planning with pencil one of the things that you can um, think about with these sort of machines is they are just cubes you know there's cubes and there's curved cubes and they're really simple shapes there's nothing like a kind of you know a uh, the organic challenges of the human form to to struggle with here these are really simple shapes um, and they're just strung together a certain way if that makes sense so I like the perspective in this. I like the bucket looking really big in the foreground and then trailing off to the the cab and everything at the back. So I'm using a Quaco Spot fountain pen here uh, with their good little pens for like uh, 20 bucks. I've um, I've done a video, It's I don't know whether it's up yet or not, uh, about what's the best fountain pen to start sketching with. Um, if I put it up, I'll put a link in, a, you know, picture in picture. If it's not up, just be patient. Uh, <laughs> um, it will be. And then, yeah, I'm starting to sketch in some of these details. So I'm going to go slightly faster and maybe put a bit of music on. And I might even have a little ramble about something of my choice, because it's my channel. And uh, I like to do that. If you saw the last video, you know that um, I've been sharing some of my thoughts about sort of mental health. So I hope you found the last one useful. Um, so today I want to talk about anger. Now, I do get angry. Uh, I get angry with myself. I get angry with my kids. Uh, the world can make me very angry because it can seem some days that it's full of some very stupid, cruel people. The one thing that I do know though, and the one thing I've been thinking about a lot recently is uh, anger isn't always about what's apparently causing or making you angry. It can actually be more about how you feel inside. So sometimes the anger and frustration that erupts inside can be frightening and sudden, but it can be more about how you're feeling. Particularly if you feel like you're failing your own expectations um, or not meeting your own standards. So, a classic example would be if I'm in the uh, the supermarket, you know, with my one of my children or both my children, and they start playing up and they knock over a lot of stuff, and all of a sudden I get so angry with them. And that is not about me being worried about the supermarket. I don't work there. Uh, these things happen all the time, you know that's why these businesses have staff and insurance and things like that but the reason why I get angry so quickly is because I feel ashamed because I feel ashamed that people are going to judge me as a parent um, and that I'm somehow failing the kids I'm somehow failing myself um, and it's the shame that brings on the anger it's a response to that but it's interesting sometimes how um, you know, if I'm not doing enough around the house, I know I'm not doing enough. I'm slacking off a bit and my partner says to me, you know, I think, you could, could you try and give me some more sport? And instantly you feel anger because you feel, again, you feel shame. You feel like um, they're having a go, you know. Uh, but actually, all those feelings you're generating inside 
and it's not actually about that you know in a different mood or a different time if your partner said uh, I'd like you to do more around the house or contribute more towards bills or whatever you'd go cool okay let's have a talk about that let's see how we can make that happen instead of just responding from a, a point of shame So here I'm starting to put in some extra thick lines around the bits, you know, the outside shapes that I want to pop and I'll probably use my food pen to do some even thicker lines around the outside, particularly in the foreground here where um, I want the bucket to pop and things. And I'm putting in some shadow underneath the machine and then starting to um, draw in a little bit of this ground detail now you can see here what I'm doing is I'm using some perspective lines artificially to, to, to sort of explain the ground so I'm adding in some uh, lines that are disappearing to a vanishing point roughly in the middle of the page and that will give you a sense of a bit more of a heightened sense of perspective and drama in the uh, in the image and you'll see as i do more of the ground detail that that develops okay so yeah you can see that's come through now i've used a slightly thicker line around some of the rocks that are closest to me to to bring those forward and i'm adding, adding in a few more details around the cab using a grey fine liner. Um, now the grey fine liner is great because when you put any paint over it you sort of the lines almost disappear and because this is supposed to be the f you know the background you don't want there to be a lot of contrast in it because then it will really give that idea of um, you know the excavator will really pop forward which is what I want in this particularly because it's it's quite a bright it's quite a bright image. A little test painting uh, just so I can get my colours, I've got like a quinacridone gold there and then a Hansa yellow and then I'm going to mix up a bit of a maybe a, 
uh, some browns and uh, some greys to go with that and just see how those sit together. So normally for an image like this I'd go background, painting first and then maybe foreground and then uh, maybe the, the actual machine itself. But in this case I've just gone in and put the, uh, the machine in. I don't know why. So I've started with this Hansa Yellow uh, with perhaps a tiny, tiny little bit of transparent red oxide in it. Uh, So again, I'm painting. Uh, that's like the first layer of the painting really done. So I'll go and put a bit of a sky in now. Okay, so I'm doing it. I'm hopping all over the place with this painting. Now I'm splattering in some bits of um, bits of this grey for the um, the foreground. Obviously, not being too precious about this, just sort of dabbing it about everywhere, and then I'll put some spatters over the top of that. So now I'm going to start doing some second layers over the uh, over the body, and I'm mixing a slightly darker darker orange, so that I can get some sense of light and dark, uh, and it helps to describe the form really of the uh, of the excavator's arm. And then finally I've gone in with the fountain pen and added in some of the hydraulic hoses and a few more little extra lines where the image needs a bit of a lift. So I do hope you, you enjoyed that one. It was nice to do something a bit different rather than a cottage or a boat. Um, I'd like to remind you guys that there is always an original artwork of mine for sale on my website. Um, there's a link below or above or somewhere so feel free to check that out if you want to buy something a nice present for someone you know uh, you can buy me a coffee uh, but please like and subscribe that's the main thing that will help this channel grow uh, so thank you for your time and listening to some of my rambling on and I hope you have a go at that and do do uh, do give it a shot um, but do feel free to send me any of the, uh, the, the art that you create as well it would be great to see some and then maybe if some people send me some art, I can do a little uh, episode where I go through uh, some of the art that people have sent me and I can maybe you know give you some help with it. Okay, thanks very much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.